So we talk about the top seven causes of gait and balance problems. When we say gait and balance, we mean difficulties in walking and maintaining posture and equilibrium. Gait and balance problems are a significant health issue, especially with advancing age. The main problem is that balance problems increase the risk of falls, injuries and subsequent disabilities. They can have very benign causes, for example muscle weakness or stress and very serious ones like stroke and Parkinson's disease. The first and most common cause of balance problems is peripheral neuropathy. When blood glucose is constantly high, it damages nerves and blood vessels. This Nerves normally provide information to the brain about body position and movement from the feet and legs. They are called proprioceptive nerves. When they're damaged, it causes balance problems. In this case, unsteadiness is common during walking, especially in dark environments or with closed eyes. This is called Romberg sign. The person has a steppage gait, which means exaggerated lifting of the knees to avoid their toes from dragging clothes. The sole hits the ground harder than usual because they cannot properly sense where their foot is. A key characteristic of neuropathic gait problems is that the person is unable to walk properly with closed eyes. There is difficulty walking on uneven surfaces and requires visual monitoring while walking. Management of diabetes, vitamin B12 supplementation and alcohol cessation usually slow down nerve damage. A complete cure is impossible because diabetic neuropathy is progressive damage of nerves. But balance may stabilize with effective treatment and physical therapy. The second most common cause of balance problems is bilateral vestibular hypofunction. The vestibular system is located in the inner ear and is responsible for detecting head movement and maintaining balance. And when function deteriorates, balance problem occur. The main hallmarks of such vestibular hypofunction are blurred vision during head movements called oscillopsia and postural instability, which means balance problems, especially during nighttime. Likely when the problem is bilateral, it rarely causes spinning sensations and vertigo, but more commonly causes balance problems. Different conditions cause such vestibular hypofunction. For example, medications, aminoglycosides like gentilage, around 30% of cases are idiopathic, mean we can't identify the cause. Some cases are due to Meniere's disease when it affects both sides. Aging also naturally causes vestibular function loss. This condition is common after 50. The treatment is vestibular rehabilitation therapy. It involves exercises to improve gaze stabilization, postural stability and walking ability. Canes and walkers are used to reduce the risk of falls. Avoiding autotoxic medications is a must to prevent. The third most common cause is Parkinson's disease. It is a progressive disease that damages nerves, especially dopamine producing neurons in the substantia nigra are part of the brain. As a result, we have low dopamine, which leads to motor symptoms. Parkinson's disease occurs after age 60, but it's possible earlier. It affects one of the population after 60. The exact cause of Parkinson's is not known, but some factors can affect risk, like pesticide exposure and head. Genetics has an important role. Low dopamine disrupts normal neuron functioning, which regulates movement. And in the neurons, abnormal proteins are accumulated called Lewy bodies and cause death of neurons. Hallmark of Parkinson's is hand tremor at rest. Bradykinesia means slowed movement and rigidity means stiffness in muscles leading to reduced flexibility. Freezing gait is common means sudden inability to move, often triggered by stress. Stooped posture means forward leaning stance and shuffling gait means small steps, dragging steps. Feet do not lift off the ground. It often looks like the person is sliding their feet forward instead of taking full steps. 90 of people with Parkinson's have gait problems. Levodopa and Carbidopa are the gold standard of treatment. Dopamine agonists like Promipexol and Ropinurel mimic dopamine effects. Now, in most patients respond well to Levodopa. Prognosis varies, but commonly can be managed for 10-20 years, effectively after diagnosis. The fourth most common cause is vestibular disorders like fibula neuritis and labyrinthitis. 
usually develop after viral infections. Means after ordinary upper respiratory infections, when infection spreads to vestibular system, vestibular neuritis is inflammation of vestibular nerve, it causes sudden onset of severe vertigo, imbalance and nausea and vomiting. No hearing loss in this case, during labyrinthitis, inflammation of labyrinth affects vestibular system and cochlea both. Causes balance problems and hearing loss both. During inflammation, brain receives conflicting signals from two ears and causes vertigo and balance problems. In this case, vertigo and gait instability are the major symptoms. Symptoms improve over time as brain starts to adapt called central compensation. The treatment is vestibular suppression at acute phase like vestibular suppressants like miclizin and dimenhydrinate. Antimetics for nausea and steroids. Frednisone may reduce inflammation. Antivirals or antibiotics are used if bacterial infection is expected. Generally rare but more common in labyrinthitis. Prognosis is usually good. Most patients recover within weeks to months. The fifth most common cause is head trauma. In this case, there is direct damage of tissues. Treatment is surgical repair for fractures and vestibular therapy to address persistent balance issues. The sixth most common cause is psychogenic gait disorder. This called functional gait disorder caused by psychological factors like stress, anxiety or conversion disorders. The person's walk may change during observation, appearing exaggerated or unnatural. It improves over time and becomes more normal when the person is distracted or not focusing on walking. Functional gait is rarely associated with falls. Treatment is gradual exercises to restore normal walking. Cognitive behavioral therapy is also important. Stress management like mindfulness and relaxation exercises is helpful. And the seventh common and important cause of balance problems is stroke. It occurs in 50% of people who experience stroke. In this case, balance problems appear suddenly with other symptoms like weakness and sleep. Usually, weakness and paralysis in one side of the body and gait stability is affected on one side. It is called hemiparesis. During a stroke, blood flow to the brain is disrupted and it irreversibly damages neurons. The person experiences difficulty walking and standing and they have the feeling they may fall. The person may walk with legs farther apart to stabilize balance and they lose coordination when changing direction. The symptoms usually affect one side of the body and it is the opposite side of the brain that is damaged. Ataxia is the main term used to describe stroke-related coordination problems and it means lack of coordination in movements.